Alright, my little clone. I know you're out there somewhere. Where was I? So today we are reviewing one of the largest toys in the Kamen Rider double toy line, and that is the Prism Bicker. Now, we're going to start a piece at a time because there's a lot to get to here, so please bear with me if this is a longer one. We're going to start off with the prism sword itself. You can see it is a very nice short sword. It's a little little bit, uh, well, it's it's short just like any other Common Rider roleplay sword, but this one goes about mm, 13 and a half inches, which that's not too bad. It makes a decent short sword at least. Now, you can see there's a ton of molded detail on this thing. All the way up the blade, you can see a lot of intricate wiring and circuitry. Again, it's that aesthetic that I really like, that this was built out of spare parts in someone's garage. It really works well here. You can see a lot of little gold paint apps too, which are painted on the back. Not necessary, but I love when they do that. And you can see there's a light channel in there. We'll get to that later on. But yeah, it's a pretty decent short sword. This, the edge of the blade here is made of soft, uh, rubbery plastic. So don't worry about whacking people with this thing. Uh, you're, you're, you're only going to, you know, bruise them instead of give them a concussion. Now, of course, the main draw to this thing is its interaction with memories. This is the one the prism bigger comes with, the prism memory. Prism. Now, let me show prism. you this. I love that. That rotating LED that really gets that name across. Works really well too. So we're going to lock it into here and hear all the noises. The little red button here on the front, which if you're holding it normally, is right where your thumb is going to go. That's what activates all the noises. comes off well. That light piping into that X there in the middle really looks awesome. I mean, now with those, stu with those studio lights on here, it's a little hard to show you, and I know it doesn't come through very clearly, but in person, that thing just lights up really well, and it really gets across the color changes. It is a really well done memory. It's got a lot of little features to it, and yeah, it has a big draw to this thing. But of course, this is just a small piece compared to the main course. The Bicker Shield. Now, just for that, uh, someone told me that a Bicker is what they used to call a beaker, what they mix chemicals in, so the mixing of memories, which is the main feature of this, it, I guess that makes sense. I'm gonna run with it anyway. As you can see here, just like the sword, there is a ton of detailing going on here. The green paint is done really well, nice metallic shine on it. And I love the light channels through all that grid patterning, that very, very high-tech Tron style patterning, pattern on the center wheel. You can see a lot of this nice white pearl paint too which really sets off a lot of the detail and makes it look really unique. I'm not sure I've seen this color on any of my other toys. You can also see a ton of that detailing in there. There's a lot of little molded textures too, but it's hard to see. So I'll show you on the back. You can see a lot of smooth areas, some cross hatches, some glossy areas. It really comes together making it look like this thing was built out of a lot of different material. That's a really nice look too. It's really well done. The shield itself, you can see, very uh, adequate handle. I mean, your hand's going to fit in there just fine. The main detail, of course, are those four slots. You can see all of them are molded exactly alike. 
Each one is a maximum drive slot for other memories, specifically the memories that came with the double driver. So I guess we can demonstrate those, can't we? Okay, 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 I was just editing that together so it kind of looked cool. Uh, I did it for a specific reason, just to demonstrate all four slots work the same way, because this thing gets loud when all four memories are in there. So if you, so if I had done that, if I hadn't edited it away, it'd be really loud. Here, let me show you real quick, all the lights going off there in the middle as you can see. Now let me switch this so it don't drain the batteries. So this is kind of why the memories so so this is kind of why the memories have very similar sounds for the charging up of the maximum drive and such. It's because all of them are supposed to act together inside the prism picker. That way all the explosions happen at the same time and it comes off really loud. And it's a really nice touch because it really works well. Now the cyclone memory is a little behind the others, so that kind of draws the explosion out a little bit. But it's a really neat effect, and unfortunately, the lights on in here are really kind of tampering with how well the lights work. So I think I think you guys need a demonstration. It's a little bit clearer. To remove, squeeze those clear green triggers. They'll fall right out, so make sure your hand is there to grab them. So that's the function in a nutshell, and it, it's really shocking how well that works, and it's a really, really impressive effect. And of course, one more feature to this is the prism sword does lock in very nicely with the shield itself, creating one huge piece of plastic. This thing is gargantuan. Very, very huge, very, very cool. Now, to unlock, you've got a little trigger on the back of the handle. You need to hold that in as far as it will go in order to release the sword. That heavy latching you just heard, that was the wheel, the dial in the middle. That automatically goes off if you will, if you withdraw the sword. So just like in the show, if you want to activate maximum drive by drawing the sword, that's how that works. Uh, the one thing I wouldn't recommend, do not hold it like this. Do not try swinging this like a club. You'll break something. Trust me. Now, I mentioned that light chamber that's in the center of the blade on the sword. We're going to demonstrate that now. That, you can see, is now right in the center of the dial. That's exactly where it should be. Now, of course, you can use any memory you want. Any of them are going to work in this. Though, I wouldn't recommend trigger and skull. If you saw my skull... Uh, trigger Magnum review, you know it doesn't actually make a maximum drive noise. It just kind of makes a clicking noise to supplement the function of the Trigger Magnum. So any others are going to work really well in this thing. And I'm going to go with an assortment that each has an explosion at a different point. This way you can actually hear a lot of big bangs as the sequence goes through. And of course, since this is the Gaia memory gimmick I love so much, there's always more stuff to do than just that. So, let's try the double driver. This time, let's see what the henshin noise for the prism memory sounds like. Well, that's familiar. Oh well, we'll get to that in a bit. But, let's go ahead and hear what the henshin noise is. That's interesting. It's very it's a unique noise. That's nice to hear. 
Uh, it also creates that prism effect there in the center. That's also nice. But that sound was the same noise we made when we used this memory inside the sword. So what happens if we stick a normal memory inside the sword? That's not supposed to happen. Pension? Okay. <laughs> yeah, unlike most slots on these weapons, that's actually... Yeah. That's actually a henshin slot, and it's going to work on any memory. So you've got a little bit of weird functionality there. And some things like, for instance, oh, Axel's memory with the revving noises sound really bizarre in this thing. Oh, and I should mention, you've got a little green switch on the back of this, too. In order to unlock the memory, you have to hold that down. Otherwise, you're going to throw the memory around the first time you swing this thing. And, of course, the prism memory is going to work in all of your weaponry as well. And we're going to do it with the metal shaft because I want to demonstrate that light again. Now, as for other memories for you capsule and candy toy collectors, I'm afraid the shield isn't going to work out so well for you. That's mostly because, one, you'd have to keep hitting this, and it's a pretty good push to get that thing to turn because operating four gimmicks at the same time. But also because these really wouldn't work so well because, well, number one, you can hear, they all latch in, but they don't make a noise when you insert them. And, honestly, you'd have to have ones that all went off at the same time. Now, I'm going to hold this thing down, which will activate the henshin noise of these particular memories. And we're just going to see what chaos noise comes out. So I guess it's kind of like hearing them all henching during the Rider War, I guess. So you can have them all henching at the same time, but after that, it's not going to work very well for these. But then again, there's this. The Prism Sword is perfect for those types of memories where you have to keep hitting the button on the front to get all the noises. Because, of course, that red button does just that. Let's go with this memory. I think that's about as perfect as it gets. Oh, it's just me having a little bit of fun. So all in all, huge price tag, but a huge turnout for that price. This is a very cool toy, very well done. Very good construction, very, very well done features. Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, it complements the extreme memory, and it really doesn't. It complements the double driver that comes with all the memories you're supposed to use in this thing. And of course, it, using the ones you're not supposed to use, that's up to your imagination. What I really would have liked to do was put four different Giji or gadget memories in here at the same time. I only own two, though, so that's kind of unfortunate. But you can do that if you want. That, that's the whole point of weapons and toys like these. You get to have a lot of fun with it, just screwing around with whatever combinations you can think up. And this is a great one for screwing around with. If you've got the double driver, you can take full advantage of this toy right out of the box. And if you're planning on getting more of the weapons, well, this might be investment for the future. Though, it might be hard to justify paying just as much for this as you would the double driver. So get that first, then get this, or wait for this to go on sale. Either way, this is an awesome, awesome toy. If you have to have it, then you have to get it over at Hobby Link Japan right now. Look, I don't know what you want me to do anymore, okay? I've done everything you asked me to. Look, I stole the axle driver, okay? You got it, fine. 
but he knows I've got this now. He's ready for me. I can't sneak up on him or attack him like this. I, I know, you saved me from getting axed like the other clones. Yes, I'm grateful, but I don't know what you want me to do from here. I, there's nothing I can do that's going to stop him. <laughs>